Jesus said, I am the resurrection. And I am the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth in me and believeth in me shall never die. Believe in that mean this. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know. And the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution of payment, nakedness a pair of sword. But as it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Oh, but nay, in all these days, we are more than a conqueror through him that loves us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principles, not power, not things present, not things to come, not height, not death, not any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the holy angels will feel, then shall we sit upon the throne of his glory. Hallelujah. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another.
from the presence of the Lord. And we appreciate his life on today, and we're here to celebrate. At this time, we will be having a selection by the family. I apologize in advance for any um, mispronunciations of names. We have Demetrius Kurtz, um, Anisha Morgan, Michelle Adams, and Nevaeh Morgan. Immediately following that, we will have a prayer of comfort by Elder Jenny Bradley. Amen. So a selection at this time. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, clap your hands. Praise the Lord, everybody. God is still great and worthy to be praised. Come on, clap your hands. He's still great and worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Let's do something great with us and how great is our God. Amen. Father, 
Father, you are the only wise and knowing God. You are the God of all comfort and all mercies. And dear Heavenly Father, we ask you right now, Lord, to come right now, Lord, and give comfort to this family. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to comfort them and give them strength, not only this day, but all the days to come. You are God that don't make mistakes. And Heavenly Father, we ask you, Lord, in their time of weakness, we ask you to give them strength and give them joy. And oh, Heavenly Father, give them good thoughts, good memories of their beloved one. And Lord, we give you all the glory and all the praise. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. time we'll be having the scripture reading the Old Testament coming from Simon Fleming the New Testament coming from Samaya Fleming and then we will be honored to have a selection by the family Amen, Demetrius Anisha, Michelle, and Lavinia Amen, please come in that order Well we do well, then we'll, in the shelter of the, the Most High, we will rest in the shadow of Almighty. I said my word, of, I will say of my Lord, he is my refuge and he is my fortress, my God, who I trust.
Amen. And at this time, we're going to have a reading of the obituary by Nedra Leverett. Amen. And that is going to be followed by tributes and reflections in two minutes, please. Amen. Please come in that order. Amen. Nedra Leverett.
came out on my son. He and um, he put a lot of influence on a lot of people that I did not know. After his um, his death came, a lot of people came up to me and told me how he um, stopped a lot of people from doing things that they thought they would never stop doing. Things that um, I don't like to talk a lot. And a lot of people like to do like the okay doctor, but they um now they look back on those words that he was saying and throughout the songs he talked about his life and what he went through and what he was going through and what he wanted his family to be and continue to be strength in the Lord. And I wanted to say thank you, son. I love you for always and forever and for being my heart.
one of our conversations. And I, one of our conversations we had, I told him, uh, you know, we're going to start doing shows in Atlanta. You know, <laughs> I wasn't brave enough, you know. He was always, you know, had some confidence, you know, brave enough. So I told him, yeah, we're going to start doing shows in Atlanta and stuff. And I told him, you know, like, One thing I told him, I told him that I learned from him. Go out doing the shows, I told him I learned from him. One thing I told him, I told him I learned from him, you know, because I never see myself doing it, you know. Always, he always gave me, you know, motivation. And, Positive and you know, inspiration. So seeing him doing it, you know, that made me want to do it. So I just told him, you know, like, you go out there, you do it, you know, once, once I see you doing it, I'm going to do it. But that one always had, that one always had energy and personality that nobody can imitate. He always stayed positive through anything or would do anything to help anybody, whether you, you knew him or not, or he knew you or not. Just because that's how he was raised. I remember my favorite memory of that is when he, it was my birthday coming up, and I told him, uh, we were supposed to go to Orlando, you know, do a couple shows and stuff, and I had got uh, incarcerated the day before. And, but I got released like the next day. Uh, so, you know, I didn't have no money, no nothing. And one thing he kept telling me he was like, Cause you know, you straight, you're gonna be alright, you know? It's gonna turn up. So I'm like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, it's gonna still turn up. So I'm like, in my head, I couldn't imagine. Like, I'm like, what you mean? I ain't got no money. <laughs> so, um, he was like, yeah, so I, you know, I really wasn't even trying to hear that. I'm like, man, I don't know what you're talking about. So I went and left to my house, and he called me like 10 minutes later. He was like, uh, pull up to grandma, you know, come, come to grandma. So I'm like, uh, I ain't really want to go, so I just went anyway, because, you know, like I said, he was the person. He was the type of person that always lift you up, you know, regardless of if he was down, or, you know, if you was down, he was always still going to bring you positive and lift you up. So when I got over there, you know, he had a, uh, Three bottles of champagne, Bel Air. <laughs> he had me uh, sixty dollars. Yeah. And that meant the most, cause you know I had no money at the time, and you know he was the only person that got me something on my birthday. So that meant a lot to me, and that was just the type of person he was. Now, you are my cousin by blood, but you are like a brother by choice. <laughs> Not too many people had that relationship. I just, you know, I forever miss you.
get snacks. I said, don't spend your money if you want some snacks. She let us know. He said, oh, I'm, I'm good. And he smiled. The smile was enough to brighten up the entire room. And that was our first moments together. After that, we let the team know that Dalvin, he enjoyed snacks. One particular day I was working, and I came across some snacks, and I said, well, let me go with this check on them and take them some snacks. So when I got in the room, I thought I was doing something, because I had my little chips and different things. Somebody had a, a clothes hamper, a little small hamper full of snacks, so now we didn't have to worry about snacks. It was that day that I learned the person beyond his sickness. He introduced to me his grandmother, who he defined as his strength and his rock, Grandma Essie. It was then that he introduced his mother to me. By this time, Kendra and I, we only communicated by phone. But he painted the picture. And his words that he left me with was, I'm proud of my mom because she's come from so far. He introduced his brother, Javon. I didn't get a chance to meet him until the day of his nieces. We, we, we went through text messages, and we talked about just a few things. I would tell him, that person will text you, don't text them back. <laughs> they don't mean you no good. It was then that he introduced me to this person known as Street. He began to talk to me about what street that person represented. It was during that time that he began to question his illness. He said, well, Ms. Cassandra, um, you know, maybe if I would have gave my life to God sooner, this wouldn't have happened. And I reassured him that sickness and disease, it didn't discriminate, that God is a God of love, and that his sickness was not a punishment. Anyone could catch cancer. So from there, we began to talk about faith. I remember him getting up and he told me, he said, Mr. Son, I have to get my body right. I have to get my body right. He was stretching and bouncing and doing, doing it with me. The staff there, we grew a fondness for Dalvin. One particular day, I went into the room to check on him and he told me he was hungry. And he, I asked, I said, well, do you want me to warm your food up? He said, I don't want that. I remember taking the top off of the, the plate and I wouldn't have eaten either. <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> so he said, I, I said, well, he said, well, can you get me something to eat? And I said, yes, I, I'll get you something to eat. And it was on that day that we let the staff know, they don't know like that food. So everyone, even on our day off, when he was present, we would send a text, who was going to get down for something to eat? One of the nurses, he told her that his favorite meal was spaghetti. She got off from work and she cooked him some spaghetti. It was that day when I went into his room with the spaghetti, he asked me to warm it up, warm it up, and our conversation changed a little. I could see that, you know, his faith, he was carrying it, but I think he was coming to terms with my illness, it seems like it's going to win. And so we just talked. And I, I love him because I, I couldn't fix it for him. I just told him, I said, well, right now, Dalvin, you're in God's hands. However it looked like, and however it ended up, if God said, well, I, I'm going to take you home, then you're with God. So right now, you're in a win-win situation. You're with God, and it's in his hand, and if he's calling you home, you're, you're with him. It's a win-win. On October the 29th, before I tell you that, you know, you heard me say that we have a fondness for him. Everybody loved Dalvin, even our CEO. 
I had him sit in the office and we would talk and he brightened her day. And oh, let me see, I got to say something about Shania. Listen, before I met Shania, I knew all about, I knew all the business. <laughs> he told me, he said, um, she's smart and she's in school. You know, he was trying to finish school because she motivated him. And I wanted to just say, say that, you know, when I met her, I told her, I see why. On October the 29th, you know, that was Friday. Came in that Thursday, but on that Friday, I remember putting my things up and going to check on him. Most of us, when we come in, the first thing is we check on now. Throughout the day, we check on now, but we're going to find a way to get to now. But he was not feeling his best. And in the midst of him not feeling his best, he mustered up enough strength to say to me, You made me happy. I'm going to take that with me forever. On October the 31st, you know, God had a different plan. His miracle came in death. You know, although we work with end of life, I will not say that we were prepared for him to leave us on that day. But I remember walking in the room and he was not feeling his best. I walked in the room and I, I just talked with him, his nurse Hannah, who loved him. She was in there with him and she was rubbing his face and rubbing his arms and rubbing his hands. I told Shania, I said, you had a nurse rubbing on your man like that? <laughs> I can't remember if she was sitting or if she was standing, but it was less than a second. She was at the, at the bedside. She was rubbing too. <laughs> yeah. I went to my office and 30 minutes later they told me, you need to come. And he was going on to be with God. But on that day, I recognized this person that our patient, this person, this young man, I realized how much he was loved. Love showed up for him on that day. The faces and the names, the pictures, the stories that he shared with me, they came and they walked with him that last night. I know that it's hurtful, I know that it's sad, but I tell you, I feel honored that I got to know this person. I would never forget him. I remember we was preparing for his birthday party. We, we had anything he wanted, you know, he, he knew he was going to get it, you know. But the day of his birthday party, you know, we asked him to say something, and it just touched all of us. He said, well, I'm walking by faith and not by sight. Like, wow, some people, they were having a bad day, and, but his words, it resonate now. Walking by faith and not by sight. Today, family, you know, I know that your hearts are hurting. But what I learned from Dalvin is, God, he reigns in the good and the bad, in sickness and in health. And what I learned from him, even in turmoil and in distress, faith, love, joy, a smile filled with gold will help carry you along the way. When things are really, really rough, you know, think on down. The young man that I got to know and I got to meet, you know, because of illness, but I don't take it lightly. So family, we felt honored to take care of him, grandma, and see, she might run on to. I told my sister, he's my nephew. <laughs> Kendra, the family, Shania, you know, God is with you and he's going to carry you through. Thank y'all.
had a great respect for David Henry. This particular day, there was, the leaves was falling around the church, and also the grass needed cut. Picked up David and Cedric, and uh, I was driving along track, and I said, you guys wanna ride, you, you, you all wanna cut some grass? Because they was raking up leaves and putting them in hammer. I said, okay. So I gave them a little lesson about the lawn tractor and uh, put David on the lawn tractor first. I said, okay, sit down, do this, do that. And he followed instruction. So I said, okay, now we'll put it in first gear. Slow. I said, okay, you follow me. And you drive in slow. All the way around the field, and he was coming, coming, cutting grass. So finally, David got the kick. Now he's got it. So I said, "Okay, you think you can do it by yourself without me watching?" Yeah. I said, "Okay." He didn't know I was still watching. I, I disappeared. I went inside. Went around the field. And he did a real good job. I said, okay, you ready for second gear? You go a little faster. So we put it in second. He went a little faster. Now I'm seeing that he really loved this. But I kept it in second gear. I don't want to go too fast. So this is, for the Cedric never got a chance because David fell in love with the tractor. So, so Cedric never got a chance to get on the tractor that day. But this is one moment that I'll always remember and he always had great respect, both of them, all, all of them, all the children, great respect for me. And I really appreciate that because there are children that they don't well roll with the seniors. But they got along very well with me. I went and picked them up for this, and I picked them up for that. And at the end of the day, when they did well, we would, uh, you know, not money, but we would take them to their favorite eating place. I think, uh, oh, oh, what was the big thing then? Whopper? McDonald's meal, or whatever the case may be. <laughs> but God is so good. Thank you, thank you, family. Thank you, family. And this is one thing that I'll never forget about Brother David. Thank you, thank you very much. He knew that you were suffering, 
He knew that you were in pain. He knew that you would never get well on earth again. He saw the road was getting rough and the hills were hard to climb. So he closed your weary eyelids and whispered, peace be thine. It broke our hearts to lose you, but you didn't go alone. For part of us went with you the day God called you home. I love you, Dalvin. And I'm going to miss you so much. Thank you for being awesome. Thank you for being my little brother. A great uncle. Just thank you for everything. When I was having bad days, he'll text me. Says you need anything. Says you good. I never asked for anything. And if I did, he always gave me more, more than what I asked for. I'm going to miss you, Dalvin. I love you a lot. To the angry, I was cheated, but to the happy, I am at peace. And to the faithful, I have never left. I cannot speak, but I can listen. I cannot be seen, but I can be heard. So as you stand upon a shore, gazing at a beautiful sea, as you look upon a flower and admire its simplicity, remember me. Remember me in your heart, your thoughts and your memories, of the times we loved, the times we cried, the times we fought, and the times we laughed. For if you always think of me, I will have never gone. Our warmest regards to Shania Anderson and the Adams family with love, thoughts, and prayers from the Anderson family. Amen? Amen. From the Anderson family. Amen. 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 At this time, we'll be having a selection by Demetrius Kurtz, followed by a eulogy by Apostle Glenda Bradley in that order. Amen.
Amen. I saw they were so weak. Amen. I said, Devin, I can't take you today. I said, I want you to stay here to get you some rest. Amen. Glory to God. I said, you know, I said, just follow us on Facebook. Go on Facebook. Amen. Glory to God. But Devin, he wanted to be in church. And he told me this. He said, I just thank God that I saw my 20th birthday. Amen. He said, God, let me live to see my birthday. And he was so excited. Amen. Glory to God. So I thank God for Devin. Amen. I thank God for the family. Thank God for all his friends. Amen. Glory to God. That are here. Amen. Glory to God to celebrate his homeboy. Amen. Glory to God. But one thing we know that Devin is with the Lord. Amen. And I believe Devin. Amen. If he wanted me to. Amen. To say something to you today. Amen. Glory to God. It would be. Amen. Glory to God. In the year that Uzziah died. So in the year that Devin died. I will be coming from Isaiah. Amen. The sixth chapter of Isaiah. And I know you all see that they are very content. Amen. Glory to God. But I want you to hear what the Lord has to say. Because I want you to find yourself somewhere in this message. Amen. Because this is Devin desire. Amen. That people be saved. Amen. You, his friend, his family, thank God for the SC. Amen. Thank God for Kendra. Amen. Glory to God and Nidra and all, all of the others. I don't know name by name, but I thank God for you all. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. It's time that I got to meet you all. Amen. But Devin will want you all to know this. Amen. And I've become a mindset of six chapters. And the Bible says, Amen. In the year that King Isaiah died, Isaiah said, I saw also the Lord. Amen. So I'm going to say, in the year that David died, somebody needed to see the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Amen. Because David had changed his life. Some of you may have known him, amen, but he wasn't changed. But David had changed his life. Amen. He was living for the Lord. Amen. He may not have been perfect, but he was living for the Lord. Amen. Somebody shout glory to God. Amen. So in the year that Devin died, somebody need to see the Lord. Isaiah said, Amen. Amen. In the year that Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Uzziah was uh, Isaiah's cousin. Amen. They were first cousins. Amen. Amen. Devin has cousins here. He has siblings. He has his brother and sister. His, his girlfriend. Amen. Yes, his girlfriend. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. He has his mom and his, his aunties. And amen. Glory to God. All his friends and his brothers. He has all of you here. Amen. Glory to God. Somebody shout glory. Amen. But Uzzah died. Amen. Glory to God. Amen, amen. Uh, uh, Isaiah could not see the Lord, but he didn't. Uh, amen. See the Lord to have Isaiah died. Uh, amen. Isaiah, well, he was a godly king. Uh, amen. But he had leprosy. Uh, and he died. I said he died. But in the year, you may not give your life to the Lord right now, but in the year, hallelujah, in the year that Isaiah died, amen. Isaiah said, I saw the Lord. He saw the Lord, amen. Isaiah began to experience, amen, the presence of God in the year that Isaiah died. Now, David is gone, amen, glory to God. Amen. We need to see the Lord in the year that David died. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One thing David will want the most of is that his friends be saved, that his friends change their lives. Why do you think David was such an inspiration to so many? Amen. Glory to God. Because he wants his friends, his family. Amen. He wants people in general. Amen. To accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior as he did. Hallelujah. If you want to see David again, amen. Glory to God. You got to be born again. You got to give your life to the Lord. Because David is in heaven. Hallelujah. I see he's in heaven. Amen. So if you want to see him again, amen, you got to give your life, amen, to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Somebody shout. Girl, you can clap your hands right there, somebody. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, bless the name of the Lord. 
how the devil brought you to church today. It was David that brought you. Hallelujah. Some of you have never have come to this church except for devil. Devil brought you here today. Somebody shout glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. So even in that, as Isaiah confessed and began to recognize he was unclean, his look was unclean. He said, but my eyes, I see the Lord. And after that, God began to send the serpent, having a live coal in his hand. Amen. When she had taken, amen, with the tongue of the altar, and he laid it upon the mouth. Amen. Laid upon his mouth. And said, Lord, this has touched my lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and my sin purged. You didn't need God to touch you. You didn't need one touch from the Lord. A touch that you will never forget. Just ask God, say, Lord, touch me. Don't worry about nothing else. Don't worry about people. Just say, Lord, touch me. Because somebody need God to touch you right now. Somebody shout glory to God. Touch me, Lord. Touch me, God. Just one touch from you, Lord. Somebody shout glory to God. Because God got purpose for your life. The same way he had purpose for Isaiah. And Isaiah was chosen by God. But God did not, amen, know what God pressed upon Isaiah. Isaiah had to voluntarily come to the Lord. You got to voluntarily come to the Lord. Somebody shout, glory to God. God will not force you. He will not make you. Somebody shout, yes, Lord. Amen, but you got to be willing. You got to be willing. And recognize that you need to make the right choice. Some of you have been making wrong choices all your life. And that's what got you in the situation you're in. But it's time you make the right choice. You know what is right. You know the right choice to make. Amen. Glory to God. Just make the right choice. So you don't have to keep going through that. Hallelujah. God allowed you to go through it. Amen. Give you a testimony. But now he's trying to bring you out. Somebody clap your hands. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah. But then Isaiah began to recognize. He said, I heard the voice of the Lord. How many of you hear the voice of the Lord? You're hearing the voice of the Lord right now. Some of you hear the voice of the devil. Say, Why is she saying that? She can just sit down and just go on. Somebody shout, Glory to God. But somebody's hearing the voice of the Lord. Because God loves you. Don't let nobody tell you because of what you have done or what you're doing that God does not love you. God will always love you. He will, in spite of whatever your life is, God will always love you. He will never stop loving you. And God will never give up on you. You can give up on yourself. Amen. You can stop loving God. But God will always love you. Until breath leave your body. Amen. Amen. Because God has hope for your life. Yes. He is the hope. Somebody shout glory to God. Glory to God. So Isaiah, when he heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? God is trying to send somebody right now. God is trying to raise you up. Amen. Amen. Who would have thought at age 21, I'm out there in the street. Amen. Night clubbing and doping. And, amen. Glory to God. And falling down drunk. Oh, they, oh glory to God. Mm. Who would have ever thought, amen, God would see some good in me. But God hand was on me when I was in the street. As God hand was on me when I was high. When I got so high, amen, glory to God, I thought the bed was spinning. Amen, I thought the room was turning around. Amen, glory to God, I cried unto the Lord. I said, Lord, if you get me out of this high, if you just get me out of this high, Somebody shout glory to God. God. And I don't think I'm waking up. Hallelujah. I was grabbing to the wall, trying to grab the wall. Thought the room was spinning, the bed was spinning. Somebody shout glory to God. God. But God saw in me what I didn't see in myself. God seeing you what you don't see in yourself. 
You don't say that you're a prophet. You don't say that you're a minister. You don't say that you're a deacon. You don't say that you're an evangelist. You don't say that you're a warrior. You don't say that God called you to be a pastor. You don't say it, but God of glory to God. He see me do, but you don't see me yourself. Don't count yourself out. Hallelujah. God got his hands on you. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was in a nightclub and I was brought under conviction. The nightclub. It doesn't matter. When God got his hands on you, yeah, you, 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 you. When he has his hands on you, he has a way of bringing you to him. Don't harden your heart. When you hide your heart and keep it against the priest, then there's much destruction going to come your way. I'm so glad I got saved in 21. Hallelujah. Thank God cracked one out there. Because I would have cracked up. Hallelujah. But with a whole bunch of other stuff out there, the dog was about to get struck out on. You hear me, young man? I was about to get struck out. But God had his hands on me. Hallelujah. That's what I can tell you, you and you and you. You don't have to continue to live like that. You don't have to continue to do no thing. Stop trying to please your friend and just associate yourself. Somebody shout glory to God. Make a difference like Delvin did. Delvin made a difference. No matter what he did in his past, he made a difference. Hallelujah. He changed. He inspired all of you because you are here. You are here. I just said, and then God said, who will go for us? Who will go? I just said, send me. I go. Is there anybody in here who say, send me, Lord, I go. I go. I go. I go, God. Just send me. I'll be whatever you want me to be, God. Whatever, God. God got a calling on your life. He has a calling on your life. Amen. Glory to God. A change is taking place. A change is taking place in your life. Hallelujah. That's why David brought y'all to church today. He couldn't get you when he was alive, but he brought you here today. He brought you here today. Yes. Right where you sit. Right where you sit. If you want Jesus Christ to come into your life and change you, if you are ready for a change to take place in your life, then God, I'm tired. I am so tired of going through this and that. I am so tired, Lord. I get high, I need another high. He called us and he knows it. Hallelujah. Aren't you tired of having a hangover? I got tired. I got tired. I told God, I said, God, there has to be more to life than this. I said, God, there has to be more to life than what I'm living. Pardon down the trunk, want to fight everybody. Somebody could have killed me. I was too drunk to fight. But I thought I could. Hallelujah. Had a mouth on me. Somebody shout glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But God. But God. He has his hands on me. God, he has his hands on you. It doesn't matter how far you go. How bad you get. God will always have his hands on you. Remember this. If you don't remember nothing else that I've said on today. Remember God loves you. He will never stop loving you. And his hand is always on you. His hand is always on you. It doesn't matter what you are right now. God's hand is on you. Amen. His hand is on you. I'm telling you. My family, when I got saved, they thought I had gotten to some cold. God started talking about the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. At first, my mom and them, they didn't want to hear it. They thought I had lost my mind because we were military. They don't travel all over 
the world that I ain't got into something. No, God got me out of something. I was talking out of my head when I was high. But now I'm talking sense. I'm talking sense now. My mom would tell me. She said, she was sitting at the table and we all sitting there eating, gathering. Amen. Go to that mama. Everybody will walk away slowly. This is my first got saved. Because they didn't understand. Hallelujah. They will walk away. They get up from the table, take their plate into another area to eat. And finally my mama got tired of listening to me. She would say, every tub got to sit on his own bottle. Anybody ever heard that? She said, every tub got to sit on his own bottle. But she was telling me, child, we'll get it when we want to get it. You got it, you got it. But after a while, after a while, after a while, my mama stopped listening. She stopped listening to me. Then that's why my other sister, my other brother, my sister, all of them. And I would go home and then they all want to hear what Shorty got to say. Y'all call me Shorty. Amen. That's my nickname, Shorty. I ain't no way sure, but they, they want to hear what Shorty got to say. My mom would take me around all her friends. Say, I want Shorty to pray for you. She's a minister. She's a preacher. I want Shorty to pray for you. Hallelujah. You don't know how long to see you, Shorty. You don't know. Hallelujah. Right now. Right now. I want you all just close your eyes just one moment. Just one moment. And I want you to think about your life. I want you to take self-evaluation right now of your life. Right now. And if you want to be saved, just raise your hand. I'm not asking you to come up. Just raise your hand right where you sit. If you want to be saved, come on. Raise, raise them high. Come raise your hand. Come on. Don't be ashamed to raise them high if you want to be saved. Come on. All over. Raise your hand. If you're not saved, your hand should be raised. Amen. I say that you want to be saved. You want to be saved. Just say you want to be. Only God wants to know that you want to be. Amen. He'll do the work. Just say, I want to be saved. I want to be saved. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus. Some have raised their hand, and God, and some did. But Almighty oh, God, I pray right now, God, that you have mercy. Oh God, forgive right now of everything that they're said, done, acted, even thought, and imagined. That was wrong and sin and is pleasing in your sight. Father God, I ask you now that you reach down into the city of the soul of the, of the man and woman. Pull out everything, God, that's not of you. Take it out by the root, God. Change lives, change hearts, minds. Father God, David has brought these people to church. He brought these people, Lord. Now, Lord, you do the work in their lives. You are God. In the name of Jesus. And hear that damn it died. Oh God, let this time your people see you, Lord. High lifted up, God. In the name of Jesus Christ. God, we thank you now for saving. We thank you for saving, God. We thank you for saving. We thank you for delivering, God. We thank you, oh my God. Thank you, Lord, for the freedom from sin, God. In the name of Jesus. God, we pray your blessings now upon the family, God. Upon this God, your people, God. Oh God, we pray your blessing, God. Oh God, upon us, oh God, the grandmother, the mother. Oh God, the, the brother, the sister. The, oh God, the auntie, the uncle, the daddy. The, oh God, the cousins. Oh God, the niece and nephew. We pray your blessing, God. We pray your blessing, God. Confidence, strengthen of God, even now. Even as they leave here today, God. Oh God, we pray now, God. Oh, God, that they remember this message, God. Let this message take it down. In the year that power and die. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you now. And we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus Christ's name. Let the church that believe receive the creed and the cast open your mouth three times and give God a high praise, which is hallelujah. 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 Glory.